Today was a really big news day out of Washington, D.C. The Senate Judiciary Committee had a big hearing with CEOs of most of the major social media companies in the metaverse meets the universe talking about harm from social media to teenagers and children and debating what might be the best move moving forward to ban social media for teenagers, to restrict social media to teenagers and children, to just a small offering of what the platform has to offer to everyone or some other solutions as well. This has turned into a viral debate on social media today as to whether or not children should have access to social media platforms, where parenting comes in, where the government should take opportunities to regulate social media further and more. So I am dying to get all of your guys' opinions and thoughts about all of it. Let me say up front, anytime Congress has talked about banning a social media platform, banning access to a social media platform for a certain group of people, or just restricting information on the internet, period, I have been extremely outspoken about why I think that would be the most dangerous precedence to possibly set for the future of freedom of expression in the digital age. Freedom of speech doesn't just take place in the traditional town square that our founding fathers fought for repeatedly over and over again, where you would literally walk to the square of the middle of town and get up on your literal soapbox and say whatever was on your heart at the time. Today's town square and public square happens to exist here. It happens to exist on the platforms that we are streaming on right now on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Rumble, on Locals, on Facebook, and particularly for Generation Z, this is the place where we get all of our information, right? This is the opportunity for us to exchange ideas freely, to break free of mainstream media, to interact with perspectives and opinions and ideas that might be different from our own values, to challenge ourselves, and to get information that the powers that be don't want us to be talking about. And repeatedly throughout the last year and a half, two years or so, everybody's been focused on talking about banning TikTok in particular, and that's gotten completely out of control and just ridiculous beyond the pale. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee held a separate hearing on Capitol Hill that's going incredibly viral on social media because they sat down with the CEOs of most of the major social media companies to talk about why social media, in their view, is point blank dangerous for teenagers and for children, full stop, no gray area, no nuance to the conversation whatsoever. So let's see what they had to say. Let me ask you this. There's families of victims here today. Have you apologized to the victims? This is Senator Josh Hawley, in case you don't know who this is. Um, And I actually really like Senator Hawley. I think he's a really fascinating member of Congress. He's introduced some phenomenal legislation. He's been really outspoken about a lot of important issues in American culture. But I have to wonder how much of this is kind of a show in the Senate Judiciary Committee room, right? Like the drama and the antics, you'll see this in a second, are so outrageous and so in your face that I don't know if I really buy the authenticity of this conversation and the people that are victimized by social media, I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, are people whose children have been cyberbullied, they've dealt with some mental health issues from social media, particularly Instagram, because he's talking to Mark Zuckerberg here. Maybe they have engaged in self-harm or suicide because of what has happened to them on social media, and that's terrible. That is an awful consequence of freedom of expression. And I hate that. I don't want that to be the reality, but bullying is not against the law in certain circumstances. It is against the law in many, many circumstances. And if these platforms failed to enforce actual legal ramifications for this stuff, they are 100% to blame. And I think that's an important nuance to have. But like if you tell someone that a man cannot become a woman, that's not breaking the law. That's freedom of expression. And if your child felt cyber bullied by that, there's a lot of nuance in this conversation, far more than actual threats for imminent harm, which do violate the law and do violate freedom of expression and free speech in the United States of America. So Senator Hawley looks at Mark Zuckerberg 
in this hearing today and says, basically, I demand that you stand up and you apologize to these families because their kids have experienced something negative on social media. And I don't know the stories of these families. I don't know the extent of what the damage and the ramification of social media bullying and hate speech and potential violence has been for these families. So I don't want to speak for them. I don't know what their experience is. But the drama and the antics just seem a little heavy handed to me. Would you like to do so now? Well, they're here. You're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? I'm sorry for everything that you've all done. It's terrible and no one should have to go through the things that your families have have suffered. And this is why we invested so much and are going to continue doing industry leading efforts. To, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. Didn't catch that because the mic didn't really pick it up. He's essentially saying nobody should have to go through what your families have had to suffer. This is why we're continuing to invest in changes and better policies at our company and across the industry of social media. And again, I have no idea what happened to these families. It is highly possible that absolutely terrible, horrible things happened to these families. But it's also highly possible that like hate speech happened to a lot of these people. And that's a fine line. That's a lot of nuance to usher into this conversation when it comes to ultimate protection and security for people versus protecting our most basic human rights, freedoms, and liberties. Did I hear you say in your opening statement that there's no link between mental health and social media use? Senator, what I said is I think it's important to look at the science. I know it's people widely talk about this as if that is something that's already been proven. And I think that the bulk of the scientific evidence does not support that. And again, I don't know if I really agree with Mark Zuckerberg here either. I do think repetitive social media use over and over and over for teenagers has been scientifically proven to be very damaging to our brain chemistry at the very least. You know, addict specialists and recovery specialists have studied the brain chemistry of teenagers who have 9, 10, 11 hours of screen time every day, largely on social media. And they have found that the brain releases dopamine just like when you get high as an addict every time you get a like or when somebody follows you or when they share their video. So I totally do believe that there is settled science or at least very deep investigative science on how social media is wildly damaging to the mental health of teenagers. Really? Let let me just remind you of some of the science from your own company. Instagram studied the effect of your platform on teenagers. Let me just read you some quotes from the Wall Street Journal's report on this. Company researchers found that Instagram is harmful for a sizable percentage of teenagers, most notably teenage girls. Here's a quote from your own study. Quote, we make body image issues worse for one in three teen girls. Here's another. Brought the receipts. Oh, boy. Quote, teens blamed Instagram. This is your study for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression. This reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. That's your study. Senator, we try to under, understand the, uh, the feedback and, and how people feel about the services. We can improve Wait a minute. Your, own, da- your are- own study says that you make life worse for one in three teenage girls. You increase no, Senator, anxiety and depression. Says. That's what it says. And you're here testifying to us in public that there's no link. You've been doing this for years. For so, years, you've been coming in public and testifying under oath that there's absolutely no link. Your product is wonderful. The science is nascent, full speed ahead, while internally, you know full well your product is a disaster for teenagers. Senator, and yet you keep true. right on doing what you're doing, right? That's not true. That's not true. Let me let me t- let me show you some okay, other but facts. Then, see, then Senator Hawley won't even let him answer a question. Like, there's no conversation that's even happening here. It's just political grandstanding. So I feel so emotionally conflicted about this hearing because on one hand, I'm like, yes, that study has said that. That is a problem. That is something that we're all really worried about. On the other side of it, I'm like, you won't even let the man answer a question about it because you're just trying to make a point to go viral on social media or to get a TV soundbite. I, mean, you, I know you, you that you're can, familiar you with. Uh, well, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, I mean, not, a that's, that's, that's not a question. That's not a question. Those are facts, Mr. Zuckerberg. That's, that's not a not, question. That's, those aren't facts. Here, let me show you some more facts. Here are some, here's some information from a whistleblower who came before the Senate, testified under oath in public. He worked for you. It's a senior executive. 
Here's what he showed he found when he studied your products. So, for example, this is girls between the ages of 13 and 15 years old. 37% of them reported that they had been exposed to nudity on the platform unwanted in the last seven days well that doesn't surprise me because let me just tell you what unwanted pornographic content is everywhere on social media and nobody wants to talk about that that was rarely part of this conversation by the way but you know what platform is by far and away the worst the worst by far of pornographic content out there it's twitter actually far worse than tiktok far worse than instagram far worse than youtube there is rampant inappropriate nudity and adult content on the platform of X or Twitter. And nobody ever wants to talk about that as being damaging to children or participating in human trafficking or psychologically a problem for kids that are consuming social media. 17% said they had encountered self-harm content pushed at them in the last seven days. Now, I know you're familiar with these stats because he sent you an email where he lined it all out. I mean, we've got a copy of it right here. My question is, who did you fire for this? Who got fired because of that? Senator, we study all of this because it's important and we want to improve our services. Well, you just told and me I a second ago you studied it, but that there was no linkage. Who Senator, did you, you fire? Yeah, I said you mischaracterized 37 percent of- See, He won't even let him answer the question that he's asking. What is that about? It's like the second that the cameras start rolling, Politicians have no realm of concept of doing their job. They're just trying to get a sound bite every five seconds. And I really like this particular politician, but it's like, what are you doing? I just don't really understand the MO here. Well, Senator, we're doing an industry leading effort. We build AI oh, tools nonsense. that your product is killing people. Will you personally commit to compensating the victims? You're a billionaire. Will you commit to compensating the victims? We set up a compensation fund Senator, with your money. I think these are these are with your money. Senator, these are complicated Yes, that, no, that, that's not a complicated I, I, question, though. That's Senator, a yes or no. Is, Will you set up a victim's compensation fund? I hate, this, I hate Congress. I do. I hate it. I hate Congress so much. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the show The West Wing. Great show. Back when we could believe in politics. The very first episode, the deputy chief of staff to the White House, Josh Lyman, has a great line in The West Wing about Congress. He says that he would rather just throw up than go up to Congress, I would rather. Yep. Because they're not actually interested in doing anything. They're not actually interested in helping these families. They're using these families as an opportunity to make a point, to yell at a billionaire so that they can get a soundbite on TV. Social media companies, as they are currently designed and operate, are dangerous products. I wholeheartedly disagree with that statement. I 100,000% vehemently disagree with that statement. That statement tells me if you say social media companies point blank are dangerous products, you're not actually aware at all of how social media works. You have no idea how social media works. Obviously, because you're probably not using it demographically speaking. But oh, that just grinds my gears. They're destroying lives, threatening democracy itself. I forgot he said that. I forgot he said that until right now. Social media is threatening democracy itself. These companies must be reined in or the worst is yet to come. Mr. Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. When we had cigarettes killing people, we did some about it. Maybe not enough. You're going to talk about guns. We have the ATF. Nothing here. So you're pro ATF now? I mean, oh my. I hate the government. I hate politicians. The answer to problems associated with speech, information, journalism, dissemination of information is never more government. We have countless dystopian novels and history books, and TV shows, and movies, and series that have proven that to be true throughout all of human history, let alone actual history to back that up, that the answer is never more government. So when these people tell you, we're interested in protecting you, we're trying to keep your kids safe, we don't want these horrible things to be happening in society again, they aren't actually interested in preventing that from happening. They're not. 
They are interested in limiting what you have access to and what opinions you are allowed to have in a no longer free society. Be very careful in trusting any elected official when they tell you the answer should be more censorship. The answer should be more government. The answer should be more regulation because throughout all of history, that's never been true. 